If you haven't watched it yet, there is a part 1 and 2 of this everything else where I talk about the wood choices, the cut list, the accessories, and all the tools you need for making a violin. Make sure you've checked them out too. And in this video, let's talk about the model we're going to build, the templates and form we're going to use, as well as some general consideration for first time build. And hopefully, by the end of this video, you will have a clearer picture on how making a violin at home feels like. The violin we're going to build along in this tutorial is Antonio Stradivari's 1715 violin, the Titian. It is ultra important to find a good model that works and follow it as closely as you can, at least until you develop an understanding of why it works. And long story short, this Antonio Stradivari is one of the 16th century guys who make the best violins of all time, and this Titian is one of his best. And that's why we are going to commandeer the structure and the design of this titian and make a violin out of it. These traditional 16th century Kremlinists made violins with a form. And we will also need the body template, the inner body template, a set of arching templates for the back and a set for the top, a template for the F-hole, a template for the scroll, and some templates for setup and assembly. And for ordinary people like us, to get all this, we will have to get a real Stradivari, or in most cases, get a real size picture of the valley we want to build and do some reverse engineering. You can go to the stretchshop.com to buy a full-size filing poster that includes life-size outline, photos, and measurements of the important aspects of the instrument they represent. This is the most complete source we can find out there. The measurements may seem overwhelming at first, but not all of them are relevant to what we are going to do here. And I'll walk you through most of the important measurements in the tutorial later. Or you can go to strat3d.org to get a set of high-resolution photos of the Titian for free. But there are no measurements included, and when you are printing it out, make sure your printer is calibrated so it will actually print on the 1 to 1 scale. After we have the pictures, we can start by making the body templates, the inner body templates, and the form. Generally speaking, by reducing 4 millimeters from the outline of the violin body, which is also the body template, we will then get the inner body template, which is also the outline of the form. But notice they are worn out on old instruments, such as on the corners where the instrument had been taken in and out from the case for too many times. Also, the right size of the right F-hole was probably hurt by some careless people when they adjust the samples. The left shoulder of the back and the right shoulder of the top, which is actually the same area, is eroded by the hands and sweats of all the hardworking musicians. And the back side of the scroll where people before us may put the scroll down on the table to tune the violin. And since they are so much worn out in the outline, I originally would suggest you to follow the inner black line of the purfling, which should also be around 4 mm from the edge to make the inner template and the form. But during the preparation of this tutorial, I find that you can go to Tradediluvier.com to get pictures of the forms that Stradivari use. And I find that the MS44, as known as the P form, is very similar to the Titian form that I made. And it also solved the problem of where is the exact locations of the blocks. So we can now simply look at the real thing and extract that from there. Then all you have to do is simply glue the MS44 outline onto the material you used for the form, which could be hardwood or plywood with around half inch thick, which is 12.7 millimeter, then cut it into line and file the edges. The only thing you have to care about is to make sure all sizes of the form are in 90 degrees. I would use something like this to do the final filing to have better chances of getting 90 degrees. And I would also open up some space in the middle for easier clamping. And don't forget to draw the center line on both sides of the form. And mark clearly which side is the top and which side is the back. Then I will apply some color on just to make it look better, which is optional. Then add a few layers of protective coat on it to make it harder, more stable, and could probably last longer. I mix shellac and sandarac with 99% alcohol as my protective coat, 
And yes, it is a type of falling varnish. Congratulations, you've just unlocked the secret of Stradivari. It usually takes a few days for the varnish to cure, which means to dry. Sunshine and a dry atmosphere can help make the drying faster. And when the varnish is cured, sand it a bit with 600 grit and 1200 grit sandpapers to make the surface smoother. And place plastic tapes on the area very near to the blocks to prevent the ribs and the form from sticking together later. And the form is now ready to use. For the scroll template, it is relatively very easy to make. You can simply glue the photocopy onto the material you want to use for the template, which can be real wood, plywood, acrylic plate, formica laminate, or even glass fiber. Just something won't wear out easily, while it will be easy for you to shape and handle. Then cut to the line and file the edges. And you will also need to open some space along the outline of the scroll inside the template, so you can draw out the shape of the scroll on your wood later. For the F-hole template, if you still remember, there are one else on the right F, so modern makers will genuinely make the F-hole templates with the left F. And note that you will have to use something soft and flexible, such as a cover of a folder to make it, because we will have to place it onto curvy surfaces. And for the arching, we genuinely use five horizontal arching and one vertical long arching on one plate. You can copy directly from the poster, but there are also warnings as the instrument is consistently pressed by the tensions of the strings, the bridge, and the samples for a very, very, very long period of time. So we will have to rebuild the arching back to its original shape with some math thing called Curtis Cycloid. And don't be scared by the name, it's just a path that is traced out by a fixed point on a rolling circle, as you can see here. This Curtis Cycloid can be found in some of the great Cremonese instruments of the 16th century, including those by Stradivari. And that's what we are going to use in this tutorial. For this, you can simply place plastic protectors right onto the photocopy and cut it out, which is one of the easiest way of doing it. And that's how we got all the templates and the form. And I know doing all this may sound a little bit too daunting for hobbyists, and because of this, and also to enhance the precision of my work, I made my own templates with laser cut on acrylic boards and do CNC on high quality plywood to make the form. The good news is, since I've made them into digital form for the computer to read, I'm going to share them with you. You can now go to Shopify to get this set of digital templates of the Titian with Curtis Cycloid archings along with other templates for setup and assembly that I made. I'll put the link in the description below along with all the websites I mentioned in this tutorial and so you can check them out too. And after you have the digital templates, print them out and do what I've just mentioned earlier or simply go ask the good people in the cutting shop to laser cut the template and CNC the form for you, then you are good to go. Here I will share a few thoughts to conclude this three-part preparation video so you will have a better idea of what making a filing at home feels like. I now have a garage workshop that is about 140 square feet, which is around 13 square meters as my little paradise. But I don't always have such a decent space. My first workshop is only about 40 square feet, which is less than 4 square meters, but it is enough for me to make a filing already. For a first time build, and with limited resources, the only thing you are going to need is some kind of a workbench. Any kind of table will work as long as you can clamp things on it. And you will need to strike your chisels and gouges in some of the steps, so it would be great if you can make the bench heavier by putting things underneath it, or even make it stick to the wall and the ground so it won't move around when you are doing it. Lighting is very important in filing making, Make sure you can see things clearly when working. The best lighting for filing making is with only one to two desk lamp in a complete dark room. Sunlights are good for tanning your woods, curing varnish, and for you to generate vitamin D, but not so helpful during the making. Preferably, I would have a place with a few windows and I can have the curtain on whenever I want. Some of the steps in the making will produce a lot of wood dust, so maybe you don't do it in the kitchen or your bathroom. 
and avoid kiss and press because your tools can be very, very sharp. And if possible, it's best to have a separate room for the big power tools to keep the dust they generate out from your working space, as well as help maintaining a quiet and neat atmosphere around the workbench. Do take some time to choose the location for your bench carefully. Every time I go to a new place to start a workshop, I will spend an hour or two just sitting in the room, imagining different layouts, and try to think of just the right space for everything, so that I don't need to move or change a single thing later. Again, make sure you have your first aid kit with you before you work on anything. Also, don't smoke cigarette. Besides catching fire, your smelly fingers will stain the pure wood and make them unholy. If you agree with what Steve Jobs said that when you are a carpenter, making a beautiful chest of drawers, you are not going to use a piece of plywood on the back, even though it faces the wall and nobody will ever see it, then you should not be able to accept cigarette smells on violins. For the record, I can finish a white filing within a week, and I heard that there are people who can do it within 24 hours strict. But it is not a race. On average, it usually takes me 8 to 12 weeks or even more to finish a violin, with enough time for the pieces to set and for me to chill around and enjoy life. Building a violin is not as hard as it seems, just do the right thing at the right time, and you will make better ones after you understand the theory underlying the design. And after all, the first violin you make may have some flaws here and there, but even if it turns out flawless, I don't recommend you to sell it, because it would be priceless, at least to you. And don't worry if you have never done any woodworking before, or think yourself as an executioner of artwork who are not good with their hands and can ruin an artwork by a single touch. I've been a classical musician since I was a kid and never thought of doing any kind of woodworking because I have a big concern of hurting my hands. And just a few years ago, I didn't even know there is a difference between a knife and a chisel. If a veteran musician like me can do it, I think you can do it too. There is gonna be a lot of room for error and I will try to make the tutorial as foolproof as I possibly can and will let you know when to be extra careful. I'm also going to upload videos to show you how to use and take care of the main tools, how to make and modify tools, along with some music playlists I listen to when making violins, and also a shorter version and a way much longer version of the full build, and probably with some other interesting stuff too. In the next tutorial, it's gonna be the actual step-by-step -step guide to the build. I will bring you to the workshop and show you how things are actually done. Remember, I start my making with no woodworking experience but a big concern of hurting my hands because I'm a fragile, classical musician. And if I can do it, I believe you can do it too. Making violin is fun and it is good to understand when it is necessary to be stiff and when to relax. So, turn on, tune in, and enjoy. <laughs>